there, this is Fabiola, and I'm here because I want to talk a little bit about different ways that you might want to think about um, organizing your computer in order for you to keep things in an organized manner so that you can find them again when you need them. So I'm primarily speaking to people who are digitizers or people who are sewists or quilters, um, in particular digitizers is um, my target audience because we tend to download and purchase lots of designs off of the internet and many people can never find their things again. I have discovered that in my classes that I teach that I've got lots of students who just don't know where all their files are at because they've never come up with a nice logical way of organizing things and being able to find them again when they need them. So I actually teach a class that's called file management and what that class is about is learning how to navigate around your computer and creating file a file structure so that you can keep your precious things organized. So what you see on my screen right now is that we are at the first day of February of 2020 and I still have my little winter snowman up here. This is screen right here that I'm just circling my mouse around is just the main screen. This is a wallpaper picture and this is called your desktop. So when we open up our file explorer in a little second or two, um, this desktop is going to be one of the areas that's going to be listed as one of the places where you can store things. Now I don't recommend that you store a whole lot on here. This is usually the place where you're going to have these little shortcuts for different programs that you might be using frequently that you want to get into easily and quickly. Over here what I'm circling around are all of my programs that have to do with my digitizing and uh, some of the sewing apps that I've got on my computer. And then over here on the left hand side of my screen I've got other programs. Um, just things like um, maybe this PDF program and music and Dropbox and just some various things that I tend to keep pinned onto my on my desktop. And again, I don't keep a lot of things on here. I just keep the things that I feel like I need to get to fairly frequently and easily without having to get into my uh, file structure of my computer. So to get into the file structure of your computer, the first thing that you're going to notice is on the screen of your computer, one of the buttons I want you to notice, we're looking at this bottom toolbar right here. It's actually called the taskbar. And you can do what we call pin, which is basically stick things onto this taskbar that you personally think that you're going to be used fairly frequently. And I don't have a lot of things on this taskbar on this computer. I just have a few things on here. And I don't put a whole lot on here because I don't really want a whole lot cluttering up this space. But I'm just going to go through them very quickly. Okay, so we're going to start from the bottom left. This here is your Windows icon on your screen, and it's also known as your Start button. I'm sure you all know this on a Windows 10 when you select this button. It's going to pop open this window, and this is going to be your Start menu. Uh, your Start menu is going to have in alphabetical order every single app or program, as we used to call them, listed in alphabetical order in this toolbar right here. We can scroll up and down and find things. In addition to that, one of the things that uh, this Windows 10, and I believe this started back in Windows 8, is that we've got this other little section in which we can also pin frequently used programs in this section so that we can find them easily if we want them. Um, some of the things are on here by default because Microsoft decided that they wanted them to be here for us. But one of the things that I want to take a look at quickly, <clears throat> excuse me, I need to clear my throat, is this settings button. I pinned my settings button into this section here because I tend to come here fairly frequently to, to adjust different settings on my computer. This settings button you're going to find actually the function for it is listed in your alphabetical order all the way down at letter S and it's right here. If I decide or if you decide that you want to pin it onto this uh, main section of your screen here, it's very easy to do. All you need to do is right click on this button and what you would see here if you've never done this before is un if instead of it saying unpin from start, you would see a pin to start and you would just select that and it would pin this little icon and function button into this larger part of the screen so you could use it. If I select the more button um, I could also pin this down to the taskbar and again the taskbar is down here on the bottom of your screen. I like it just where it's at that's all I need it for is right here on my main screen. 
the reason I want to come here is because I have had a lot of students um, over the years tell me that they find it difficult to see their mouse button and maybe even their cursor when they're typing in a Word document or something. So I just want to show real quickly that this is one of the things that you can real easily adjust when you turn on your settings. Just come up here to Devices, double click on it with your mouse, and you can come over here to your mouse on the left hand side. Click on that and a screen will open up where you are going to have some ability to adjust some of the settings on your computer or your mouse, okay? Um, you might want to adjust your mouse size here. Um, it's going to be under this category right here. But under these ones here, if you're a left-handed person, you might want to change which is your primary button. Typically what we say is as right-handed people, we want our primary button. That's the one that you click on the left-hand side of your mouse with your index finger if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, you might want to switch these and uh, just make your primary button your right button instead. It's a personal preference. How many lines do you want your mouse to scroll at when you're using your scrolling button and different things like that. But right here under this related settings, adjust mouse and cursor size. If you open this screen up, this is where you're going to be able to change your pointer size. I keep mine at about a three. What I have discovered about this recording option that I'm doing for you is that even though if I were to adjust my pointer to a giant size here, it's not actually adjusted in the recording screen. So I'm just going to leave mine at number three where I normally keep it. You can adjust the pointer color. So it's white with a black outline, a black one, one that will, see, it will hover over your screen, will change color, the mouse will change color if you're partly over a light and a dark area of your screen. Or you can make it colorful if you want to. And down underneath here, this is for the cursor. Now remember what your cursor is. That's the little line that um, shows you where you're at if you were writing a line of text or something. And so again, you can adjust how big and wide that cursor is at. And once you've made those changes, you just need to close out this screen by hitting the X. You don't need to try to hit a save button or anything like that. So over here in this settings button, there's lots of different things that you can play around with in order to adjust things for your own uh, personal preferences. I just wanted to show you that about the mouse because that seems to be an issue with a lot of people that the default size is not large enough for them. And that's how where you go to fix it. Okay, so underneath here as we look at our taskbar, this is a searching button where you can put your cursor and you can type in um, something that you can't find or want to have help with finding on your computer. This is Cortana. Cortana is a little... Uh, help me out kind of button. It's sort of like ask Google or asking Siri on an iPhone. It's that same sort of function. This one here is this task view. If I select task view, this is going to give me some opportunities to change some things on my uh, desktop if I wanted to. I'm not going to mess with any of that. Here's my Word icon for my Word, Word program. This here is the button we're going to be talking about specifically in this video. This is your file explorer button. This is the Microsoft Store button here. Next, we have Edge Mail and the Edge Browser, and those came with Windows 8 and Windows 10. It is the default browser that Microsoft would prefer for us to use, but you don't have to use it if you don't want to. And you don't have to use their email program if you don't want to. I personally do not. I prefer the Google Chrome browser, and there are other browsers that a person can choose to download and use on your computer. Firefox is very popular, and there are other ones also. Um, I just have some uh, personal preferences why I prefer to use Chrome over Edge. Okay, uh, the one thing I want to make to mention at this point is that do not try to install an old version of Internet Explorer because that is no longer supported by Microsoft, and they do not monitor it to make sure that people are not planting viruses and that kind of thing. So don't use Internet Explorer. And the other thing I want to say about Internet Explorer is it is not the same thing as File Explorer. File Explorer is the ability for you to navigate around inside of your computer and find your file structures and your pictures and all of those kinds of things. So they both use the word Explorer, but they're entirely different things. Okay, so don't get them confused. Lots of my students do get them confused. And the last thing that I have on my taskbar down here is my snipping tool. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, possibly if I decide to make time for it. So my purpose today really is to show you about the File Explorer because this is the thing that many uh, people who are new to computers or 
are new to embroidery and trying to learn how to use a computer in regards to embroidery are a little bit confused about. So how do you get there? You just automatically click on it with your mouse and it opens up this screen. So you are going to be able to um, use this as your navigation, what we call navigating around in your computer. It means that you're moving around in your computer and finding things, exploring, like the explorers did when they navigated the world in their sailing ships a long time ago, right? So we look at our screen here, and I'm looking at the left-hand um, access bar, this navigation bar. This is a tree structure, what we call a tree structure, which basically means that there's our main branches, and if you select some of these arrows, what they're going to do is they're going to open up branches of things so that we can see further down into other levels of our computer. So one of the things that I like to describe to, uh, in particular, women in my classes is that you have to keep your things organized, otherwise you're not going to be able to find them. And one of the ways I like to describe a tree structure is it's kind of like having a dresser or a chest of drawers in your bedroom in which you store your personal clothing. This is like the entire chest of drawers and all of these little sections are drawers that are within your chest of drawers. You can open up one of your drawers and within your drawers you're going to find different things that you have placed in there so that you can find them again. You might have a sock drawer, you might have a pants drawer or a t-shirt drawer, etc, etc. And it's just a way of keeping your things organized. All right, the other way that I like to describe that is the reason why you want to keep your drawer, you want to create drawers or folders within your system here is because when you do your laundry, you know, ladies, you probably don't typically leave all of your clean clothes in the laundry basket, just all mixed up there. Um, most people don't anyway. Um, you probably take your clothes out of the laundry basket when they're ready to be, they're all dried up and you're going to, fold them up and you're going to put them in the proper drawer so that you can find them when you want to wear them. It's the same kind of thing with your file structure of your computer. You've got a main storage place and within that storage place you've got little pockets or folders in which you can put things so that you can find them again. And you can create folders, as many folders as you need to, and you can create folders within folders so that you can keep things organized. Okay, so if we look at this, this is one of the things that came along here that kind of confuses some of my people. First thing that you're going to see in this list is called Quick Access. You'll also notice up here in the pathway bar that it also says Quick Access. I just want to mention here that if I click on this arrow here, I can expand this menu. And what I'm going to see is a whole bunch of things listed here. These little... Um, they're like little push pins right here. These are things that have been pinned so that they show up over here in this list. So this quick access list that I am running my cursor down right now, everything that's in this list here, you're also seeing within this section right here under frequent folders. There's a desktop folder, a desktop folder, a download folder, a download folder, documents, documents, pictures, pictures. Those have all been pinned so that they are right here in this quick access. And then underneath here, these are the last four places that I personally um, was working or storing things um, with things that I, projects that I recently have been working on. So I typically keep my quick access not expanded. I click on this little arrow and I close it down because what would have been here, I can see here and I just don't want all the clutter necessarily showing up here in my left-hand taskbar. It's up to you what you want to do about it. But continuing on down um, underneath here, underneath this PC, PC means personal computer, are going to be some um, apps and they're going to be the different storage places again. So again, you're going to see the same desktop here that you see up here, the same document folder here that you see over here. So I don't want you to get confused. This is just one of the things that they call, this is a library is what I believe they call this system over here on the left-hand side that Microsoft has created for us. And it's just a way to get to the same places, but two different ways to get there, either by clicking on it here or clicking on it over here. Okay, so I hope that that makes sense to you. These are built-in folders that the computer came with. Your desktop is a folder, and that was what we were looking at a while ago, where my little snowman picture was at. Your document folder, download folder, this is a kind of a temporary place that uh, you can put things or that 
things might want to go into when you're downloading off the internet. We're going to explore that in our next session of this video series. These are all built-ins, so you're going to have a music folder, pictures, and videos. In addition to this, you're going to have this Windows C drive. Now, your Windows C drive is where all of your program files and other important things are also at. So, um, for example, because we are digitizers in our class, one of the places that we sometimes need to get into to um, maybe check files or do something is going to be in that program files times 86. If you are an MBX digitizing program user, you're going to find your folder right here under digitizer. You can click on it and then there's digitizer version 5 embroidery software. That's the program that I run on this one. Some of us are Hatch users. Hatch 2 it comes in further on down the list in alphabetical order under the Wilcom tab and the Hatch Embroidery 2 tab. Okay, and if I click on that, you're going to be able to see that it expands and these are some of the folders that are within the Hatch Embroidery uh, program. So I wanted to mention that because the other day somebody said to me, I just don't know how to get into the Windows C drive and find the program files. Well, it's really easy. And I think this is probably a little easier than what I kind of remember it used to be on the old Windows 7. That's been a long time ago now for me, so um, I wanted to mention that to you. Within here, you are also going to, if you scroll all the way down to Users, is it under this one here? Yeah, it's underneath here. You can see our Users folder. If I select this folder, um, you're also going to find that this is one of the places where I could, again, my name is Fabiola Martinez, and I might be able to come in here to this place, and I'm going to be able to find some folders that are duplicates, again, of some of these things that are right here. So my Documents folder that's up here, I can also get to it way down here in this list under Fabi M, under My Documents. And then there's some, when you install MBX and when you install Hatch, they also put in this little folder here under your users file that is called My Embroidery. And it's going to have some folders within here where there might be some designs that have been planted in there with the program. Anyway, that's kind of an aside because um, what this is really all about is how this file structure is working. Okay, so if we continue to come on down the list, this is some um, important things for how this Lenovo computer runs. This is sort of a backup drive and different ways that the drivers and different things work on this computer. I don't mess with any of that too much. This Fiona 1 says that it has a letter G after that. This is a USB drive that is currently in my computer. Right here you see it listed and right underneath it you see it listed again. Again, my friends, don't let that confuse you. It's just that sometimes <laughs> if I expand on it, I'm going to see the same three folders that are in my Fiona 1 USB drive that I see in this list here. It's the same thing. It's just a duplication. So uh, again, just a different way that I can get to my Fiona. When I click on it, it also opens up in this screen and I am able to double click on it and see what kind of things I have saved within that USB drive. Okay, so just a little way that that file structure works. Again, it is called a tree structure, which basically means there's a trunk and there's branches. And within the branches, there might even be little twigs and all of those things relate to folders or a chest of drawers with drawers in it. And maybe your drawers have little boxes in them. And within those boxes, you might have jewelry, or you might have underwear, or you might have socks. Think of it in that same kind of way, you know, just kind of have to figure out a way for it to make sense to you. So within my document folder, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm going to go back by hitting this little arrow up here in the upper left because I want to get all the way back to where I was I was at a little while ago. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about my own document folder and my embroidery folder. So where I have put it is in my documents. I'm double clicking on it and it's the very first thing that's in my documents. Why? Because I come here quite frequently as a digitizer and as an embroiderer and one of the ways that I can assure that it's easy for me to find it is that I have called it Fabby's Embroidery, but I have the little ampersand or and at symbol. It's not the ampersand, it's the at symbol um, in front of my name because the way that these things get organized in your tree structure 
is in alphabetical order or in numerical order. So if I had a number one here, number one would precede my F for my name, so this would have been the first item up here. Same thing happens with some of the symbols on your keyboard. If you use like this at symbol or a pound symbol, uh, maybe the percent one, any of those will also place them um, up high in this list because they would come before letters of the alphabet. Same thing would go if you decided to put a number in front of them. Um, that would also be a way to keep things organized and to prioritize things if you wanted to get to them fairly frequently. Okay, so my fab is embroidery. I've been doing embroidery for probably about 14 years. And over that time, I have done lots of purchasing of designs. I've gotten lots of free designs. I'm going to double click on my folder and just show you. It's again, it's either in numerical order or in alphabetical order. Basically, on this one, it's alphabet. I have got one folder here from this company that that was their name, one, two, three. And so that's why they're the first ones up. But if I scroll down, you're going to just see that I've got lots and lots and lots of folders and lots and lots and lots of designs. I think I have probably about 30,000 designs in here. Um, basically, what I have done with mine is that I categorize things pretty much by subject matter. Um, this is a digitizing folders. This is stuff that pertains to my digitizing divas group that I've been a part of for many years. This is a company called Dime that I um, own software from them and I've gotten lots of designs from them. I've got folders for dolls. You know, these are just basically things that I um, that I have that I organize in a way where I can find them again. I've got a folder for fairies. I have a folder for flowers. I've got thousands of flowers. I love flowers, so if I double click on it, within my flower folder, you're going to see that I pretty much have them organized according to the company that I've gotten the design from. And then within those folders, um, I may have additional folders. You can see here that I've got a lot of things in here that were free designs from um, this particular company. So you notice that when I opened up this particular folder in the flower folder from Advanced Embroidery and this particular folder. This was called Rose Jeff and you see that I've got a picture showing. Now it's because I have digitizing programs that have a function in them that's called an iconizer and an iconizer actually uh, creates a little picture of what the embroidery design actually looks like so that when you're browsing through your files you can actually see it as an embroidery design. Um, both my Janome MBX uh, and my Hatch 2 programs have built-in iconizers. The nice thing about that, and I know you can buy them for other programs as well, and even some generic ones, is that um, once again, when I click on this design, I can see it as a picture, which helps to save me some time in trying to find stuff. But I could also view this, um, when I select my view button, right now it's set for large icons. I could set it for extra large, and I could see it even bigger. I could select my view button and I could see it just as the details of that file. So it's just giving me some information about what type of a file it is and how big it is. The other way I can see this in that picture view is down on the bottom right hand side of my screen. I don't know if you'll see this well, but there's two little boxes right above my taskbar. And the first one is the detail view. If I select the next one to the right, which is way over in the corner, it turns on the picture view of it. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, another thing about the View tab, which is really great on our computers, is that when we're in here, there's other things that you can make some changes in for your own preferences. This is your navigation pane, and it's, this is your navigation pane here. So basically what it is, is it's showing us once again that tree structure of all the files that are within your document folder. In addition to the navigation pane, you can turn on this preview pane. And mine is turned on right now, and I'll show you an example of it in a second. If I select the picture right here, see how it popped up over on the right-hand side? This is my preview pane. And what it is is it's showing, again, that embroidery design with some of the additional information about um, how many objects there are in it, how big it is, what kind of a design it is, that kind of thing. So I like to keep this preview pane um, as one of my selections here. The detail pane is very similar. Um, it changed, if you notice, when I turned that one on. The picture itself got a little bit smaller, but there was a little bit of additional information um, that became available when I had the detail preview pane turned on. For my purposes, I'm usually fine with just the plain preview pane. And so the other thing that will happen is I can also click on that PDF file and it 
It doesn't make it a whole bunch bigger than it was on the left hand side, but you know, somewhat bigger. So it just gives you an idea of uh, some of the stuff about that design. Pretty handy thing that you might want to keep turned on on your computer. Another thing that you'll find under the view tab here, um, different ways to view your list of things. Um, under the view tab, you will also find further over on the right hand side that you could select this item check boxes and you could have that turned on. And what that does is it actually puts this little box with a check mark in it to show that this is what has been selected. Now, to me, I I usually don't use check boxes. I, you know, it's just one of the things that to me is um, redundant. Lots of people like them though. And when you're in a big long list of things, sometimes that can come in quite handy to have your little check boxes turned on. Okay, so I'm gonna turn them on to see what it does to this little folder here. So it's just appearing up in the upper left hand corner and I could check it and get a preview of that design or whatever it may be. Okay, so that's just some of the things that you can see within the view tab. Poke around, um, you know, some of the options that might be available to you, you know, where you can change some of the search options and just various things um, to suit your own preferences. All right, now how do you make a folder? Super simple. If you don't know how to do this, I'm just closing down some of these things here. I'm coming back to documents, coming back into, oh look, I didn't turn off the check marks. I'll turn them off in a while. Turning on my Favis folder. I'm going to come in here and I am going to get rid of item check boxes. I don't like them. So as I mentioned before, I've got many, many, many folders in here in order to organize my things. And the way that you, there's two basic ways that you can create a folder. One of them is, is you can come back to your home tab up here, up on this upper taskbar, turn it on. And then over here, you'll have this function for make a new folder. You just simply click on it and it's going to come up way at the bottom of my screen because this is, like I mentioned before, it's alphabetical order and what that folder is going to be called by default is new folder. And you can see that I've already got one new folder, so this one is called new folder number two and I'm down at the bottom of my screen, you can see it. While this is still blue and kind of flashing, you can see the cursor kind of flashing if you look carefully, I can begin to type on my keyboard what I want to call this folder. So let's just call it um, two test because I think I've already got a one test up there. And I can hit my enter button on my keyboard and I now have a two test uh, folder in which I can put some things inside of it. Now let's just pretend that I want to open that folder by double clicking on it and it's telling me that it's empty. I can make another folder. And this is where I'm going to show you method number two of making a folder. So within the uh, main part of your screen right here, all you need to do is use your right mouse button and just right mouse click. And what's going to come up when I do this is a little bar that's going to give me some lit, um, options of different things that I can do with my right mouse button. Remember, remember I mentioned a while ago that your right mouse button gives you options. So if I just scroll down, I'm going to see if I hit new that I'm going to be able to make a new folder. So I can create a new folder by clicking on that. Same thing happens. It's a little text box with a cursor and new folder is written in blue. And within here, I can put in a name and just call it again. That's what I named it. I hit my enter button and I now have a folder within my folder. Okay, so within Favi's Embroidery, I have a two test folder and I just created a folder again within it and it is empty. There's nothing in these folders. That's how you create folders. And folders are very, very important for embroiderers because you need to stay organized. Um, the longer you do this, the more necessary it is to stay organized. And if you've been embroidering for a little while and you have not yet created yourself a file structure, um, probably I would think that your computer is a big mess and you've probably got designs all over the place. You've probably got them in the download folder. You may have them in documents. You may have them on your desktop, they could just be all over and you are gonna have a little bit of exercise in creating folders and organizing your things. And it's not that hard to do, you know, just sit down and spend a little bit of time um, as you need to to get things organized. I really encourage you to do that. I've now closed down my file explorer because I'm gonna talk very quickly about my little snipping tool over here, I mentioned it. And it's one thing that I really like because it has enabled me as a digitizer to just gather information. Let's just say I'm, I'm browsing on Pinterest or I'm somewhere on the internet and I see 
something that inspires me as an embroiderer or a sewist or a digitizer. And I can use this little snipping tool to take a little picture. That's what it does. It takes a little snippy picture of something and it can be saved on your computer or it can be copied and pasted into a document or something of that nature so that you can use this little piece of inspiration. So how do you get this snipping tool if you've not gotten one before? One way is, is you can just put your cursor over here in your searching button, search bar, excuse me, and just type in SNIP, S-N-I-P. And as soon as you start typing, your computer's very smart and it's going to come up with, oh, Oh, snipping tool she's looking for snipping tool and over here on the right hand side I can say that I want to um, open the file location so if I wanted to really find out where in my computer that snipping tool is the app is at I could find it there but what I could do with it very easily is I could pin it down here to the taskbar like I did on my computer now mine says unpin from taskbar because mine's already pinned to the taskbar I don't want to unpin it but if you want to pin this snipping tool to your taskbar, I would suggest that you do it. That way it's handy and easy for you to use. So pin it to your taskbar and it's there easy for you to use, okay? I'm going to show you how I use it. I'm turning it on and the window pops open and I'm going to say that I want a new snip. So I select new. My picture, my wallpaper here got grayed out, which basically means that it's ready for me to take a little picture. Now you see the crosshair cursor on here. All I need to do is hold down my left mouse button and click and drag. And I'm just dragging around that little snowman's face and I am going to save it. This is the saving button right here. Basically it means that it's saving to my computer and it kind of looks like the old fashioned floppy disks if you were around back in that, <laughs> in those ancient days. So I'm going to select that I want to save my picture and where it opens up this screen at was the last place that I saved a picture. So a couple of days ago I was working on a little instruction sheet for people for my uh, Maggie's Mesh embroidery group and so I had taken some snips of things so that I could create my, my uh, instruction sheet. So that's why it opened up here. Now if I didn't want to save this snowman picture here all I would need to do would be to use my toolbar over here on the left hand side of this window and I could just navigate around in here and maybe I would want to put it in my picture folder and maybe I would want to put it in a document folder or something else so you know you would just choose where it would be that you would want to save this picture in the place where you can find it once again it's always going to come up with the default name of calling it capture so obviously I wouldn't want to call it capture because the next time I take a picture of something or a snip, again, it's going to want to call it capture and it would ask me if I wanted to call, <laughs> overwrite this if it was in the same folder. So I would just type in my name of what I want to call this picture. I'm going to call him Snowface. And underneath here, under the save as type, you will see that right now it is being saved as a PNG file type. That's a picture file. If I click on this down arrow and expand it, I'm going to have a choice of PNGs. GIFs or G JPGs, which is called JPEGs, or this HTML, which is a, I think what that is basically is it sends, um, could create an internet link kind of thing. I usually either do them as a PNG or a JPEG, um, and both of those things could also be used in my digitizing programs if I decided I wanted to use this as a digitizing image to make it into an embroidery design. Okay, so then all I would need to do is say save. And my little snowman picture has been saved in that folder. And this is ready to do a new picture if I want to. Or I could close it down by hitting the X. Or I could minim I could make it a little bit larger. Or I could minimize it down to the bottom taskbar. And it's ready to use again if I wanted to take more pictures. Okay. I'm just going to show you that it really did save in the place I wanted it to. So I'm opening up my file explorer again by hitting my little manila envelope on the taskbar. This time I am coming back to the folder. Now remember that these folders were the last places that I had been doing things. So they're going to be still in this list. And this was the folder where I saved my snowman. Double click on it to open it. And there's my little snowman picture right there. Okay, so just to show you that that's how you use the snipping tool. That's how you get to the snipping tool. And it's a handy little device. So I think that what I wanted to accomplish in this first video has been done which basically was that I wanted to show you, um, first of all, how you might want to adjust your mouse if you felt like your mouse was not the right size for your own ability to see things. 
And unfortunately, in my recording program that I use, it doesn't adjust the mouse size according to what I'm actually seeing on the screen. Um, so I, it didn't do me any good to try to make a gigantic mouse for you to see it because I experimented with that and I was disappointed that the recording device did not change it according to my <laughs> what I was actually seeing. Anyway, I didn't say that to confuse you. I wanted to show you about adjusting your mouse and your cursor settings so that you have an ease of being able to see what you want to see. And then I wanted to talk to you about that file explorer and just showing you a little way to get around inside file explorer. I want you to become comfortable with it, create some a folder for yourself that's called your name with embroidery and then within there start making some folders of things that are pertinent to the kinds of designs and the kind of work that you do. Okay, so I um oh, I tried to open something that wasn't there. So anyway, I just wanted to cover that again with you. So the next time I make a video, I believe what I want to do is I'm going to go onto the internet and we'll do a little bit of downloading designs and I'll show you my preferences for how I download and how I save things and then extracting them. It's also called unzipping. So I hope that this little video was helpful to you and that I was able to inspire you to get your designs organized. And again, this is Fabi or Fabiola and thank you a lot for watching. Have a good day. Bye for now.